What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. We got a lot of interest in this little tar amps amplifier. So we decided to get a different amplifier, the Banda BD250.2. Picked it up off of eBay, $98.95. Check the video description below. I'll have a link where you can go pick one of these up. Let's check out the specs. You can see two by 125 watts at two ohms or one by 250 at four ohms. It is a class D amplifier. It's nice, it's bridgeable, whereas the other amp was not. Frequency response has a wide range frequency response, low THD, nice signal to noise ratio. So here it is, look how small it is. It's really difficult to portray how small these little tiny amps are. This one's actually much bigger than the tar amps, but still very small has a really cool acrylic case and it has the owner's manual on the bottom. So let's get off this plastic protection, take a closer look at the manual. Everything is in Portuguese, unfortunately, but we can discern most of it. Again, 125 by two at two ohms or 250 by one at four ohms. And here's the exterior. It has 12 gauge for the speaker outputs. And just, it looks really nice with this acrylic case, just really, really slick looking. And here on the right side, you can see the remote, the 12 volt and the ground. These are all 12 gauge connections. So you really don't need more than that for this size of an amp. And there's a 20 amp fuse there, standard ATC style fuse. And then you can also see the heat sinks there. And on the back, RCA inputs, as well as high level inputs. So you can use speaker level inputs or RCAs, whichever you prefer. I just can't get over enough how cool this amp looks with this acrylic case i just think it's uh, awesome i mean seeing the internals of an amp are just just awesome anyway but let's check out the dimensions it's around five inches 4.9 inches by 3.7 inches and the millimeter equivalents are there on the screen as well and then for the depth it's about inch and a half or 38 millimeters i have people ask all the time what are these little amps good for well Got some examples up on the screen, DIY, boombox, a golf cart, your mama's Yugo, your sister's side-by-side, etc. <laughs> Right now we have the amp all wired up. Let's fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amp dyno. Try some RMS power output test on this mighty might. First off, four ohm stereo rated 60 watts by two, 14.4 volts. Let's try it out and see what we get. One kilohertz test. Look at this, 79 and 75. Yeah boy. Yeah boy, he did rated power plus some more. Let's try uncertified, takes us up to the clipping point. And right about the same, 79 and 74 watts, 14.56. Let's try dynamic burst. Again, one kilohertz is the test tone. Very close to the same as well. 78 and 77 watts. I think it jumps up a little bit here at the very end, maybe to 80. Yep, 80 and 79. Now the efficiency was difficult to calculate exactly, so I gave an estimate, 85 to 90% which is good at four ohms, so that's nice. All right, now let's try two ohm stereo where the amp is rated 125 by two, 14.4 volts. First up, certified test, it takes us up to 1% THD. Again, we're using a one kilohertz track. Oh yes, 141 and 132. Meet its rated power again, actually beat its rated power. Let's try the uncertified test up to clipping. 141, 132, seems to shut off right about that. Power output mode. Dynamic, send the burst tone into the amp, one kilohertz. Doesn't do as well as you would expect on a little chip amp, but it does do about the same. 144, 139. Now, as far as the efficiency goes, again, we're gonna estimate because the clamp, 82 to 85%, pretty good. All right, now we're gonna bridge the amp using the two outside terminals here. Uh, for the speaker outputs, that'll bridge it down to one channel. It's rated 4 ohms mono, 250 watts, 14.4 volts. Now for these tests, I ran 40 hertz track because nobody really needs one kilohertz bridge in my opinion. 
246 watts, 14.48, so right at the rated power. We'll give that a pass, it's close enough. Let's try uncertified up to the clipping point. And again, look at that, 249, one watt away from the rating. So again, that, that's close enough, close enough for government work. Dynamic power sends a burst tone. And look at this, it does get over the 250 watts at under 14.4, 14.34, we got 257 watts. As far as efficiency goes, it's gonna suffer a little bit with the 40 hertz track, somewhere between 78 and 82% is our estimate. Now I usually make you guys watch until after the end of the end credits to see these low ohm tests, but for today we're gonna to do it now. So we're gonna try 2.67 ohms mono, which is a 1.33 stereo, and yes, it handled it, 362 watts at 14.4 volts. Then we said, well, let's drop it down to two ohms mono, which is one ohm stereo load on the amp. Look at this, 426 watts. But yeah, it popped that 20 amp fuse. So we didn't put a bigger fuse in and try it because we didn't want to blow the amp up before we were able to test it with speakers. And uh, so here we did after the dyno test, we'll try it out with the infrared thermometer. You can see, I think 115 or so is about the highest temperature we got. Here are all the results on the dyno sheet. You're welcome to pause this if you want to see it, but overall it did its rated power plus more in every ohm load. We're very close to it in the mono setting and it also did, it handled low ohm loads, which is pretty incredible. Now the biggest question everybody asks about an amp is how does it sound? Let's try it out with the bookshelf speakers. Now we'll try the amp with a six and a half inch Savard high Q sub. See how it does with the bass. I've been running it a solid hour on music, playing it really loud. Yeah, it's heating up. Heat sink is heating up. Let's check out the side here. Yep, 129 right in there. All right, so as you can probably tell, this is much more of an amplifier than the last, the Tar Amps mini amp. This one has got some guts to it. It can push the sub, it can push the bookshelf speakers very nicely. So let's take it apart and see what kind of amplifier chip they use here. Very nice big heat sink here on the uh, amplifier board and it's most of the weight of the board of course solid aluminum with the fins there for heat dissipation and here are the different components of the amplifier. We have to take off some screws on the bottom that hold the heat sink on to be able to get to the amplifier chips and of course they have thermal compound on them so we'll have to clean off the thermal compound then we're going to take a closer look, find out what kind of amplifier chips they are. 
but yeah this thing has a huge heat sink for the size of these little tiny amplifier modules and there's the different components of the board look there's a dime on the right side to give you an idea of how tiny these modules are incredible on the right side here are the class d amplifier chips P powell r audio 4321m and these are class d audio amplifier chips and the specs on these say it does 135 watts at 2 ohms using a heat sink or 90 watts per channel at 2 ohms without a heat sink. That's crazy not even to have a heat sink and these do that much power. Alright, let's talk about the good stuff. The power output, it did its rated power. Aesthetics, very cool looking amplifier. Show this one off to your friends. Very small size, decent value, has RCA and speaker level inputs. For things that could be better, it has a fixed gain has no crossover unless you get the 250.1 model, which is a subwoofer amplifier. No remote level. It's not marine rated, and it doesn't have built-in Bluetooth. If it had built-in Bluetooth, it would be just knock it out of the park. So Banda, make one of these with Bluetooth, and this will be the killer amp. For 100 bucks, it's not bad, though. Way better than the Tar amps, which is about half the price. I would definitely step up to this Banda if you wanted a small amplifier like this. So this one's much more flexible. You can use it stereo or mono. It can power subwoofers. Sounded really good with the bookshelf speakers. I know you guys probably can't tell because that's not portrayed well over YouTube and compression and all that stuff. But yeah, sounds really good. Make sure you check the video description for links to the other videos. Also, links to these products if you want to purchase these. Thanks as always for watching. Appreciate the thumbs up. Special thanks to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat. Big D, I'm out of here. All right, those who stick around usually know that I do extra amp tests at the end, but today I'm going to do an update of this Tar Amps DS160.2. Many people ask, what's this remote connection for if it has automatic turn on? Well, you can actually use RCA level inputs with this amp. You can purchase these little RCA adapters off of eBay. Check the video description and just wire them straight into the little Tar Amps adapter. It's got the positive and the negative for each channel. Makes it very simple to hook up RCAs or these type of adapters like Rockford Fosgate cells that have RCAs on one end and the speaker leads on the other. Another thing I need to correct is the chip used in this is the TPA3221. You big dummy! I mistakenly showed the MOSFETs in the last video, so my bad. But anyway, this uh, amplifier chip is rated 100 watts by 2 uh, at 10% THD or 88 watts by 2 1% THD, but it has that voltage range of 7 volts to 30 volts. So such a wide range, that's why it didn't do that much power. So again, thanks as always guys for watching. Make sure you check video description below for links to all the products as well as related videos to this one. I'm going to sign out for today. Until next week, you know where I'm at.